History of the Hungarian People's Republic The Cooperative Farm Movement Quote, In August 1948, Rakoshi announced that mass collectivization would proceed over the next four years. By 1953, there were 5,224 cooperative farms, representing a quarter of the arable land. Unquote. Quote, State farms held about 14% of farmland. Unquote. So in total, the socialist farming sector was more than a third of all agriculture. Around election time in 1949, Burchett visited an election meeting at one of the most conservative regions of Hungary, Seldemölk, near the Austrian border. Quote, After the meeting was over, the taverns were full of excited peasants, discussing Rakoshi, who most of them had seen for the first time. All they knew of him was that they had heard from the priests that Rakoshi was a synonym for Antichrist. But he talks good sense, one glum old peasant told his neighbor. He talked about seeds and fertilizer and machinery, as if he knew all about it, about crops and prices. I was told he would only talk about kolkhoses and the church. Kolkhoses was a famous bogey word at the time in some of the more backward villages, where the priests spread the word that the kolkhoz was a sinful Soviet invention. Many of the peasants had no idea even that the word meant communal farm. They only knew from the priests that the kolkhoz was an evil thing and must be avoided. Hungary will certainly not remain a country of tiny landholders. The development of the machine tractor station and the cooperative farm have started the second revolution in five years in the Hungarian villages. The Hungarian peasants, because millions of them have had the status of serfs for generations, are backward and fearful of change, and the government is wise in introducing the new cooperative farms very gradually. The principle is to demonstrate to the peasants that the cooperative farms give the best results, the best crops, and give more free time to the farmer. There is no pressure on people to join. Reactionary priests in all parts of the country warn farmers to have nothing to do with this new evil. Rakoshi explained, quote, Our first and foremost task is to strengthen the already existing cooperatives and to make provisions so that these cooperatives attract the working peasantry through their good example and good results. Owing to the initial difficulties, some of our cooperatives are not sufficiently attractive, and it happens that some of the cooperative members who come from the poorest village class go over to industrial construction or go into the towns which offer sure and permanent wages. If, as in such cases, the maize field of the producer cooperative is covered with weeds, or the yield is smaller than that of the individually working peasants of the village, then the enemy, the kulak, grasps the opportunity, exaggerates the situation, and spreads the rumor throughout the whole district. Therefore, we must support with all our strength the work of the producer cooperatives. We must help them to eliminate the difficulties. The help should be led by the party, the federation of working youth, the state, the councils, the state machine stations, and state farms. It is important that where development is not sufficient, the highest or the third type of cooperative should not be suggested, but we should be satisfied with the simplest or first type, which has the advantage of giving an opportunity to the individual farmer and the still hesitating peasants to try out the good side of cooperation at a time when they still are afraid of a more advanced, higher form, which is too collective for them. We should not be afraid of the first type of cooperation, the superiority of cooperative production will show itself at this simple stage in that, as the experience of the past years has proved, in the majority of cases the members of the first class cooperative will move towards a higher cooperative grading." Unquote. All those who want to join, perhaps 15 or 20 families, will meet together and elect a committee, a governing board of the cooperative. If their farms are not adjoining, the committee will have to do some negotiating with their neighbors, exchanging perhaps some pieces of land so that the cooperative farm will lie in one block of land. The members will have to decide what sort of farm they want to have, and there are two main types. One, one in which the land is completely pooled. The peasants lose all claim to any land if they withdraw. Payment will be made on the same basis to all, according to the number of working days he or she has worked. 2. 
The land is pooled only for working purposes. If the peasant wants to withdraw, he can take his land out with him. Payment is based partly on rent paid for his land, and partly on the working day system. Old established cooperatives have already built their own cinemas, and in some cases small theaters, to which troops from Budapest come and play. Rakushi summed up, quote, The policy of our government of not tolerating any kind of compulsion or pressure in forming the cooperatives, but strictly adhering to the principle of voluntariness, has been vindicated. Unquote. Indeed, after they had seen the efficiency of the cooperatives, the poor peasant gladly joined them. As historian Helmreich wrote, quote, The poorest Shreda, the agricultural population who received small plots in the land reform program, the introduction of cooperatives held no terror for them. Unquote. The machine station is an important adjunct to the cooperative farm, and a valuable bridge between the city worker and the peasants. Hungary's small farmers are not wealthy enough to own tractors. The government set up machine stations all over the country, each with a few tractors, harvesting machines, and other essentials. They were manned by young men and women from the city, politically educated as well as being first-class mechanics. All of them volunteered for the work. They are the city workers' ambassadors to the peasantry. At first, they were regarded with deep distrust. In some cases they were attacked, their sheds burned. They are there primarily to serve the cooperatives, but any farmer who wants his plowing done can call up the machine cooperatives, and the plowing will be done at a very modest charge. In some cases the machine stations have been absorbed by the cooperatives, and of course the latter has priority over the private farmer's work. The private farmer must pay slightly more than the cooperatives. In the old days, a villager turned to the priest as the supreme authority on all matters. Now, they turn to the mechanics. Instead of being completely isolated as they were at first, the technicians from the machine stations are now the center of the village life. They are good propagandists for socialism by their very skills. Work hard, develop your cooperatives, and you and your children can enjoy the same sort of life as we have in Budapest, they tell the peasants. They open up entirely new horizons, give a picture of a life where one need only work eight hours a day, six days a week, have paid holidays. Why should farmers always work from dawn to dusk and live in misery? The cooperative farm and the tractor will alter all that. The government, of course, favors the cooperative farms, by selling them the best seeds and fertilizers, giving them the benefit of any new developments in treating diseases of crops or cattle. By communal effort, they lay on an irrigation system, they take the advice of the government and try the deep plowing and rotation of crops. Specialists survey their soil for them and tell them what is best to plant where. Usually by the second season, there is a demonstrable improvement in their crops, and in the financial situation of the members. More farmers want to join, and in a neighboring village, a new group starts up, and that's the way the government wants to have it. The cooperatives should grow naturally, by the example of successes firmly demonstrated. In 1949, the government had to put a temporary halt to the formation of new cooperatives. They were beginning to grow too fast, faster even, than Hungarian industry was able to keep pace with tractors and machinery. But the movement is now on a firm basis, with over 1,500 cooperatives, farming half a million acres, and 220 machine stations, operating 3,800 tractors, by the end of 1949, the last year of the three-year plan. Life has become better. Rakoshi explained, quote, the slow development of individual peasant households is due to the fact that over 80% of them farm small plots. In such cases, it is extremely difficult and often impossible to use modern agricultural machinery and the latest production methods. The scattered small peasant farms retard and hamper the rapid development of our economic life. Our party wants every working peasant to use modern means of production, machines. 
We want him to have everything that the town is capable of supplying. We want him to have electricity and water supply, doctors, hospitals, maternity homes, cinemas and sports grounds. We want him to have a radio set in his home. We want his sons and daughters to enjoy all the amenities of the town. We want him and his family to benefit from social insurance, old age pensions and all the state assistance which the city worker receives." Unquote. The article Land Reform in Hungary in the World Today of 1949 states, quote, The biggest change has occurred in the lives of the 100,000 families formerly employed on yearly contracts as farmhands on the great manorial estates. Theirs had been the lowest social status in the rural hierarchy. They lived in miserable barracks in the manorial courtyard and worked under the supervision of bailiffs for practically unlimited hours." Unquote. In capitalist times, quote, milk, sugar and fruit were luxuries in the Hungarian villages. In many places the adults could obtain no work and the children were compelled to stay home from school for lack of proper clothing. It was stated in parliament, there are families where four-year-old children do not know what shoes are because they have never worn them. Half the village dwellings were mud and adobe huts with earthen floor in which tuberculosis killed off 10 to 12,000 people annually." Unquote. Or as Emil Lengiel wrote in Capitalist Hungary, quote, millions of peasants had still to struggle along with little or no land, while huge tracts belonged to a few magnates. The plight of the landless farm worker was particularly sad. One of their spokesmen, Sándor Csismadia, presented this gloomy picture at the turn of the century. I have watched the life of the peasants on the estates, three or four families, sometimes as many as 20 to 25 persons, living in a single room of a hut. I have seen men collapsing of famine on the richest soil of the country. I have also seen men being virtually drowned in their fat. Families of the Pusta, which is the Hungarian plains, are working for 15 kreutzers, or a dime, from 3 in the morning till 10 at night. The working day of the factory hand was very long too, and he earned not much more than the farm worker. When the labor unions began to agitate for an 8-hour day, they met violent opposition. Hunger typhus was endemic in parts of the country, and tuberculosis was called the Hungarian malady. Pellagra and other vitamin deficiency diseases sapped the people's health. In some areas, half the infants died before the age of five. Iniquitous tax assessments favored the rich. The richer the taxpayer, the less his share of the burden." Unquote. Lengiel discusses the socialist construction in the countryside in this way. Quote, Many country people lived in straw-thatched mud huts, which had to be replaced by more durable houses covered with tile. The government introduced fertilizers, improved seeds, new farm machinery and farm products. It undertook large-scale irrigation, drainage and marketing." Unquote. Howard K. Smith stated that, during socialist construction, quote, "...the tone of life in Hungary is changed. The peasant has lost his demeanor of chronic servility." Unquote. Rakoshi was delighted to state at the Second Congress of the Hungarian Working People's Party that, quote, "...the horrible poverty which strangled the village in Horthy's time has disappeared. The village has become wealthy and consumes more agricultural produce." Unquote. Nothing had been done for the Hungarian peasants or villagers for hundreds of years until 1945. Even villages on the outskirts of Budapest had no electric light until the three-year plan brought it to them. Nearly 400 have been linked up with the electricity network during the three-year plan, and by the end of the five-year plan, there will not be a village without electric light." Unquote. Quote, Collectivization of land released an abundant supply of men and women for work in mines and factories, the single-minded communist emphasis upon investment in heavy goods production ensured unprecedented increases in output. In terms of gross production figures, the growth rates in the first generation of industrialization were impressive." Unquote. Quote, Experience of the past has taught the peasant to fear the state as their enemy. Today, the propaganda of the church against collectivization as the instrument of the devil reinforces that fear." Unquote. 
not only the reactionary priests, but also the rural capitalists, fiercely resisted the cooperative farm movement. Quote, Kulak bandits brutally murdered Imre Kish, a peasant in the village of Lendelka Polna, the secretary of the local organization of the Hungarian Working People's Party. Unquote. Quote, the Catholic Church and the adherents of the old regime in the village, former estate bailiffs and the remaining gentry, all these have made energetic propaganda against the land reform, first saying that those who claimed land would be punished when the rightful owners returned with the Americans and British, and then, when this did not happen, that the Reds would drive the peasants into the dreaded Kolkhoz, with collective meals and collective wives. The first object of communist policy, therefore, was to dispel these fears, to avoid the word, and to prove that producers' cooperatives were better than individual farming. This has certainly been done. The groups started in 1948-49 to 49, have been given every kind of help, in the form of credits, fertilizers at cheap rates, tractor service from the machine tractor stations at special rates, livestock for fattening on credit, expert advice, and they have shown good results. The following figures show the higher grain yields on cooperative farms, compared with the average on individual farms in the same village. Naturally, these results are impressive to the Hungarian peasants, who know what good farming means. Now, if you look at this statistic that Warriner has provided, you can see that the cooperative farms in these seven villages are shown to be anywhere from 20, 25, 30 percent more efficient than private farms. Rakoshi stated that, quote, The average wheat and rye yield was 9.2 percent higher last year than in the 10 years of peace preceding the war. This fact is more noticeable because production carried on in the large estates before the war gave 15 to 20 percent higher yields than on the peasant farms. Due to this fact, our enemies calculated after the land reform that it would take much longer to reach the peacetime standard in agriculture. Unquote. And the 9% higher yields than the best years of capitalist Hungary had been achieved in spite of the fact that after the Second World War there had been extremely bad weather. Quote, we must take into consideration the fact that there has been a drought every year since the liberation, which was especially severe last year. In the light of these facts, it can be stated that our working peasantry has, by and large, fulfilled the hopes placed on them." Unquote. Regarding these droughts, the New York Times of December 27, 1952 wrote that Hungary, quote, suffered from a severe summer drought and spring frost in 1952, unquote. And according to a scientific paper by I. Palfey, presented at the 14th International Congress on Irrigation and Drainage in 1990, quote, the most significant droughts occurred in the period 1947 to 1952, unquote. These droughts actually caused a severe famine in the neighboring Yugoslavia. As Rakoshi pointed out, quote, the damage caused by the bad weather would have meant a catastrophe in capitalist times, as they spelled catastrophe in neighboring Yugoslavia where now a veritable famine is raging and hundreds of thousands of peasants are becoming impoverished." Unquote. To fight against the terrible droughts, massive irrigation works were built. Quote, During the first five-year plan, the Tisalok Dam was built in Tissa. A 100-kilometer channel was dug from it, which is used to regularly irrigate the area. Thus, it has been possible to improve the grazing fields and begin rice cultivation on a huge area and to plant forests. Irrigated area has increased tremendously. Before liberation, irrigation was practiced only on 14,000 hectares, but by 1958, it was already practiced on 72,000 hectares." Unquote. Rakoshi enjoyed immense popularity during socialist construction. The liberal writer Martin Eben wrote, quote, one of the men who led the communist government following World War I, which means the Hungarian Soviet of 1919, is today the deputy premier of Hungary and secretary general of the Communist Party. He is Matyas Rakosi, easily the most important political figure in this country." Unquote. 
and according to Eben, Rakoshi's policies were popular not only among the far left, but also more broadly. He writes, quote, Rakoshi pressed actions that were favored by genuinely liberal Hungarians, unquote. The regular people often sent letters to Rakoshi, expressing their opinions and asking for all kinds of help. Apor writes, quote, On one occasion, a small girl, Ida Tombor, from Yas Yakohalma, asked Uncle Rakoshi to provide her with school textbooks because her family was poor. She wrote, I turn to you because I know that you help every child of the proletariat. Rakoshi allocated 100 forints to the girl's family to purchase the necessary books. The parish priest of Tapio St. Marton asked for the leader's help in replacing the lost bell of the local church. He wrote, We have heard that Mr. Vice Prime Minister has retrieved the bells of so many villages before. Ours has gone missing too. The bell will be recovered, promised Rakoshi. Unquote. Quote, Letters expressed the people's gratitude to Rakoshi for a new textbook, a new renovated school, or the unity of workers, as in the case of the workers of the Goldberger factory, who wrote their letter to the leader of the working people in the happy hours of the unification of the two Marxist parties. Letters of gratitude were written by sportsmen and sportswomen as well. A group of Hungarian athletes at the London Olympics, for example, thanked Rakoshi in a letter for providing the opportunity to take part in the event where they had the chance to demonstrate the ardent fighting spirit of the Hungarian democratic youth." Unquote. Hungary actually achieved extremely good sports results at this period because of the government's support. All kinds of sports, especially football, became very popular. As told by teacher Gila Kekesdi, when Rakoshi toured the countryside, quote, People rushed Rakoshi with presents. One of the peasant women brought him bread, the other a cloth, the third a knitted coat. An old woman standing next to me also seemed to want to give something too. Handing over a basket, she pushed into the crowd and said, Comrade Rakoshi, I cooked this, but I could barely save it from my husband because he loves it too, but you'll receive it from us with love. Rakoshi received a lot of presents in Ketchkemet, said the driver, Koroi Zirmai. I remember a truck brought the presents from the political rally. The garden was full of them, said Lajos G. Unquote. The peasants gave animals and food as presents, which Rakoshi typically donated to various charitable causes. Quote, there were geese and five sheep. We kept them in the yard for days, then they were taken to the zoo. The edible gifts went to the children's home and dormitories. Unquote. Rakoshi toured the countryside, at political rallies, and also to frequently visit ordinary people and learn about their problems and listen to their opinions. Quote, he would take a walk around the given location, village, factory, etc., chat with the people about their problems, and sometimes even share their meal with them. His visits, especially those in the countryside, often lasted until sunset. Unquote. During this period, socialism was being successfully constructed both in industry and agriculture. People's lives were improving tremendously, and they looked to the future with hopeful optimism.